Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today we are going to look at using TCP for your trace routes. It's a pretty um, common question I get asked, so I thought I'd whip something up for you. It's a little background. So trace, up, trace route, we've been using that for many years to determine how a route, um, how you get routes between devices. So this is kind of important to understand routes. So that's layer three, that's routers, right? This is accomplished using the ICMP protocol and manipulating the IP time to live. So specifically, what do you do? So the time to live value starts at one. When it hits zero, that layer three device, like a router, will report that time to live is now expired. So when you get that, then you know the guy's IP and you put that on your response screen, right? So the specific response will re vary depending on the specific operating system or the utility being used, right? They all call it something similar, but at the packet level, it's time to live expired. And ICMP obviously works with IP version 4 and 6. So recently many network and security administrators have been blocking ICMP for a whole bunch of reasons that I'm not going to get into. It's just that's the way it is. So I'm looking for some traceroute utilities, utilities that could perform the same function but will use UDP or TCP. In this example I'm just going to look at TCP. Some of the utilities and systems I found are in the next few slides and I tried them on my Windows 8.1 system. So from a trace, you'll see something like this. ICMP, time to live exceeded, time to live exceeded in transit, that sort of thing. So this guy, trace TCP, I like it, a command line tool, big command line kind of fan. Uh, it's Obviously it's free, you can get it on GitHub, there's the URL. And you need WinPCAP. So for all the Wireshark users out there, you've already got it, so you're good to go. If you do not have Wireshark, then you've got to go fetch WinPCAP. If you are totally confused and want to start from scratch, just go download Wireshark and it installs WinPCAP for you. Um, there's a whole thing about it supporting raw sockets and then Microsoft no longer supported it and XP and all that kind of stuff. But the point is, if you have WinPCAP, you'll be good to go. You should also be logged in as a user that has administrator rights to be on the safe side. Some systems you don't need that, but just to be on the safe side, make sure you run your command prompt uh, as an administrator. So I performed a simple test. I used port 80 to get to google.com. And it's kind of cool because I know Google has some multiple routes. So I want to see what it would do. And you can see it looks like it worked just fine, right? It gives me all little times and stuff like that. Uh, this is also important because sometimes ICMP gets routed differently. So TCP port 80 would give you the true route. Um, here's a little bit about the request analysis. So in packets 10, 12, and 14, 10, 12, and 14, the time to live is set to 1. You can see that. I added a column in Wireshark, time to live 1. You can see that. Um, and then you can see three requests go out. You can also uh, override that using the dash P option in trace TCP. That's good to know. And you can see the requests go out every 500 milliseconds or so and cannot be modified. So that's the request side of it. So on the results side of it, you can see um, packets 118 and 121 are from 225 and 241. But you can see down here, it just reports 241, the last router, and it doesn't tell you anything about 225. So that's good to know that if you do run this tool and there are multiple routes, you will get the last one that came back. It's also kind of interesting to see that first one, that star, really did not come back. So that's not a bug or anything. It's just timed out. Okay. Um, you can also control the timeout option using a dash T. And, and again, I'm just doing a quick overview. So you can go through the help screen on trace TCP and figure out a bunch of stuff as well. Um, for the people that are into performance measurements, you can also see that at the wire level, it's 22 milliseconds. But in the application, it's 24, that sort of thing. That's because obviously it has to go through WinPCAP, through the application, get to the screen. So there's a little bit of added latency there as well. Next one, IP switch, what's up, virtual, visual, sorry, visual trace route. It's free, but it's not portable. You have to actually install it. It supports TCP as well as UDP as well as ICMP. So that's a neat little exercise to go through in some places where you can use different protocols to see if you get different routes when you change the protocol or when you change the port number. Here's the URL where you can go get it. And I only tested TCP for this specific article. And you can see right there, TCP, right? These are all the things that you can change within the software itself. A little bit about the request analysis. It 
tends to stagger these things out 11 and 22 milliseconds that tends to be what I saw and the time to live obviously starts at 1 as well well this guy did document multiple paths you can see it right here you can see the fifth hop 225 and 241 right which is kind of nice to know uh, I didn't have to do anything extra to do that it just does that by default I like this uh, indicator down here in the bottom left corner where you can actually set the color for the latency thresholds and you can actually set your loss percentage threshold threshold as well there's a graphical topology map which is very helpful as well so you can see it kind of splits off to two different routes and then goes back over there third one net bees so they have both free and commercial products you can also use a virtual OVA appliance or you can actually run this on Raspberry Pi or you can buy their stuff as well so net bees free there's the URL up here it's not portable right it's because a virtual machine I don't really consider that portable right so you need to run some sort of virtual environment for that I used VMware's virtual workstation <clears throat> excuse me and they have a dashboard environment and a cloud uh, type server that will report monitor and configure the agents so the free version which is probably what you're going to try allows one agent three targets one user the cloud server account email alerts and one week of data storage that's pretty cool for free so that's that's a great way to start using the tool and the virtual appliance installation is pretty straightforward if you're familiar with that sort of thing the configuration side this is kind of where you set things up I only set up the trace route and I used port 80 but you can see you can change a lot of this stuff that you want to play around with I did like the fact that it was the only tool that allowed me to change the type of service DSCP values you can actually change that as well um, that's a big plus the other ones did not do that you can get around it with the other tools but you gotta start hacking your registry and doing all sorts of crazy stuff so the NetBees requests it only sends one request because that's different right just one request the other tools sent three requests so you will not figure out if there's a multiple path in this specific example the tests are run every two minutes that's the interval but that is configurable right that's just the default and on the response side it's got this cloud type environment with these really cool charts and it's really really nice on the eyes uh, I like the email messages as well it tells you when the agent starts up it tells you when the agent disappears and that sort of thing so I hope that helps I tried to keep this under 10 minutes so we reviewed all three tools and just a lot of observations about them they're all completely different you may decide to use all three so I hope that helps have a good day bye for now